President Trump, though, he's going after social media companies for censoring conservatives. Trump says too many voices are being destroyed. He wants free speech on social media. Come on in, Brent Bozell, Media Research Center president. Is that what you want? I mean, do we want absolute, flat-out free speech? You're on Facebook, say what you like. On Twitter, say what you like. You want that? No. Uh, I think there are limitations to it, Stuart. There always have been. You can't cry fire in a movie theater. You can't drop an F-bomb on your license plate. There are certain things that you can't do. Um, and I think the same rules should apply to, uh, uh, to, to the Internet. Now, that leaves the other uh, social media, that leaves the other 99.99% .99 of expressions allowable. I think that, that the media social media would do well to resolve all these problems simply by wrapping itself around the First Amendment but, and enjoying the same freedoms that everybody else does, and but, we'd be fine. But they can't, because they, they are the censors. Somebody has to sit and look at all those billions of Facebook posts and say, that's okay and that's not, and that is censorship. And it is inevitable that there will be a political angle to that censorship. Well, especially when you have algorithms that, that rate things as hate speech, hate speech being defined as things you don't like. Um, you know, Jack Dorsey of Twitter made the statement over the weekend that, that uh, yes, it's left-leaning, but they don't have a liberal agenda. Well, of course they do. And, and, and you know they do because it continues where one organization and one individual after another who is a conservative is being censored. I mean, they can't all be making it up. What's your solution to this problem? Uh, fourfold. Number one, there has to be transparency. Uh, first, clarity. What do they mean by hate speech? You know, that's the center of all this. They come up with these definitions based on the word hatred. Define hatred for once and for all. And the way you see it defined by some of these social media outlets, it's outrageous. So, two, transparency. This is something that they're not doing. They're talking about it, but no one's being transparent about these algorithms and how they're rating people. And why is it that someone like a congressman, Jim Jordan, or Devin Nunes are being censored the way they're being censored? What's going on? Thirdly, conservatives should get not a seat at the table, but an equal seat at the table. They're, we outnumber liberals. If they want to reflect public opinion, give us equal footing in making these decisions. And number four, just embrace the First Amendment and the freedom of speech the way everyone else does, with the limitations that everyone else has to face, and I think we'd be fine. Last one. Before we got to you this morning, I was saying that the rally in the stock market, the growth in the economy, the return to prosperity, is probably the most important story that's going untold in most of the media. Am I right? Oh, absolutely right. Um, and it's been going on since the beginning of this administration. Uh, whether it's jobs figures, whether it's stock market, whether you know, it's unemployment, these, these numbers are just regularly ignored. Look, this is good news, and there's just no way that they're going to report good news where Donald J. Trump is concerned. It's Period. So tr it's, it's true, isn't it? If it's good for Trump, it's not going to be in this, this front page. This is not it's hyperbole. Not if, it's, if it's good for Trump, it's not reported. If it's possibly in the realm of possibilities, <laughs> Somehow, maybe possible, bad for Trump, front page. You got it right, yet again. Brent, you're all right. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you real Thanks, soon. Sir. Promise. Thank you.